atheist killing for atheism? Does that exist? Yeah, it does. Uh, there's a group called the League of Militant Atheists. They were part of the Communist Party in the Soviet Union. And they're an example of atheists killing in the name of atheism. And atheists basically terrorizing in the name of atheism. You know, because atheists, they'll criticize, you know, religion and mostly just organized religion. And they'll say that it's oppressive, it kills people in its name. Well, it's kind of funny because whenever you tell them, here, I'm going to go on a little bit of a tangent. Uh, the hypocrisy of atheists is that they'll blame Christians for what the Roman Catholic, you know, pagan cult did. But then when you pin them for what communism did, they'll say, well, not, not all atheists are like that, you know. But again, doesn't, it, but again, of course, when you say that, when you say not all Christians are like that, they'll say, oh, no true Scotsman fallacy. But then when you pin them, they'll say, oh, no, all atheists are like that, you know. Again, I've done videos on the, on the hypocrisy of, of atheists and their arguments. And, but the bottom line is, is that communism was atheists killing in the name of atheism. They can deny all they want, but that's what it was. I'll read you from Wikipedia, and before you say, oh, Wikipedia, they give all the sources. They have all the sources in their, in their article and everything. I'm going to read this to you. And I, I understand the atheists are probably going to get all mad and leave their nasty comments and, and probably continue on with their sad day, typical of them, but I don't expect much from them. Because I myself, I'm a former atheist, and I did, did the same thing, so don't expect much from them. But it says here, the League of Militant Atheists, or Society of the Godless, Union of the Godless, was what they're called, was an atheistic, anti-religious organization of workers and intelligentsia, not the best at reading, that developed in Soviet Russia under the influence and ideological cultural views and policies of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union. So they came about because of the Communist Party's ideological and, and uh, pol policies and cultural views. So it was motivated by atheism uh, from 1925 to 1947. It consisted of party members, members of the Komsomol, I guess I say it, youth uh, movement, uh, those without specific, specific political affiliation, workers, and military veterans. The League embraced workers, peasants, students, um, and it, go, it just go, goes down there, kind of affiliates with factories and everything says, um, guided by the Bolshevik principle of uh, communist propaganda and the party's orders with regards to religion, the League aimed at exterminating religion in all manifestations and forming anti -religious, an anti-religious scientific mindset amongst the workers. It propagated atheism, scientific achievements. Yes, you know, quote, the Bible calls it science falsely so-called. Because the uh, so-called science that these atheists are into is, is not science. It propagated atheism, uh, so-called individual work, uh, sending atheist tutors to meet with individual believers and attempt to make them renounce their faith. So they're desperate to make people denounce their faith. Again, this is why state atheism is so bad. I mean, people want to talk about Islam. What about state atheism? I mean, there's no religious freedom under state atheism. You know, when you have state atheism, you get North Korea, you get Soviet Russia. This is why state atheism is every bit as oppressive as they claim Islam is. Most of the peasantry was unimpressed, and every and every even the party. It, sorry, I'm not the best at reading right now. Regarded the league as meddling and insufficient. I'll just go down there. Scroll down a bit more. Uh, let's see, I'm just kind of skimming through this thing. Here it is. The league was normally an independent organization established by the Communist Party to promote atheism. Uh, it published newspapers, journals, and other materials that lampoos, lampooned religion. It sponsored lectures and films and organized demonstrations and parades. It set up anti-religious museums, which and it led to con uh, concerted effort, telling Soviet citizens that religious belief and practices were, are, were wrong and harmful, when the reality is that atheism is the real wrong and harmful. Because again, when you have uh, denial of God, when you have atheism in the state, you, know, you get Soviet Russia, you get North Korea. Because again, this is, the, this is the fruit that atheism produces. Jesus says, you can know them by their fruit. This is the fruit that atheism produces. It takes away your religious freedom and your liberty of conscience. Uh, and the good citizens ought to embrace a scientific, atheistic worldview. And not, not to mention it was imposed on them, too. Which gets back to this thing. Atheists, they, they don't believe in religious freedom. But, uh, let's see. I think that's all I want to read, but um, in regards to the whole thing, what does the Bible say about all this? Uh, and then, again, this is a perfect description of some of these atheists, uh, these atheist communists who kill people in the name of atheism, who are every bit as oppressive as the Roman Catholic Church. It says, Psalm 14, 1, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none that doeth good. Perfect description of these atheist communists. Uh, the Lord looked down from heaven upon the 
children of men to see if there are any that they understand and seek God. They are all gone aside. They are all together become filthy. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. Perfect description. You can jump down to verse 53. It says the same thing. The fool has said in his heart, it has said in his heart, there is no God. Corrupt are they. They have done abominable iniquity. There is none that doeth good. God looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand and that, or any that did see God. Sorry, not reading it right. Every one of them has gone back. They are all together become, or they are all together become filthy. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. Again, perfect description. I mean, there's none that doeth good. I mean, you say, well, there's some good atheists out there. There's none that doeth good. And, um, Communism proves that. The atheist communist Soviet Union proves that. You know? and, and next time an atheist says, well, religion kills people, just tell them, okay, what about the League of Militant Atheists? What about communism? They were and they were killing in the name of atheism. They can deny it all they want. They can say, oh, no, they weren't doing that. No, no. It was in the name of atheism. A state atheism is very oppressive. It, it's very, uh, it takes away your freedoms. If you support freedom and liberty, you should really oppose state atheism, and you should also oppose state enforced Roman Catholicism. I'd say that uh, state atheism, Roman Catholicism, and I'd say state like political Islam are kind of the trinity of oppression. They're all they're all three uh, oppressive. They they'll take away your freedom of religion. So if you're freedom, you should oppose state atheism, state Roman Catholicism, and state Islam. You should oppose all three. Uh, you know, you should really and not just oppose it, like vehemently oppose it too. Because if you don't oppose state atheism, you'll get the League of Militant Atheists, you'll get the Soviet Union, you'll get North Korea. So, yeah, don't be deceived. And again, I'm a former atheist, so I, I know what I'm saying. Uh, don't be deceived. God bless you. Goodbye.